show. Plenty of you are headed to Nuggets and Spurs at Ball Arena tonight. Unfortunately, you will not be seeing Jamal Murray play. That news coming down in the last half hour. Murray is going to miss yet another game, his sixth in a row, and there's only six remaining regular season games after tonight, Cello. We talked about it with Zach and Phil there to end the drive a little bit. What is your panic meter on Jamal Murray, specifically because we can't really lock down this injury. It feels like it's an ankle, and then it's a shin, and then it's a knee. His whole leg hurts, keeps moving around uh, your your level of concern at this point. Well, I, I heard you guys talk about it, and uh, I'm probably a little bit less than all three of you. Because uh, when this first kind of started, going, the news broke that he was going to be missing some time. He kind of seems th- – there's – in his career – We've seen this a little bit, and I don't know. Maybe it is calculated. Maybe it's a plan for them. Um, the, the the concerning part for me to get me to five is that it's moving. The injury's moving, like, and that's the biggest concern for me because you never know how that's going to affect him. And, and to Zach's point earlier, I mean, you want some ramp up getting back in with your guys before you get to the postseason. And I know everyone assumes you're going to win that first series kind of no problem, but you don't want him getting back into the groove during a, an NBA playoffs. And that first series could still be Phoenix. They're looking like a potential play-in team. Yeah. A team that's beaten you twice on your home court after the All-Star break. So I would agree with you that common sense would say, hey, you're a one or a two. You should beat a seven or an eight. But with this new play-in format and a lot of stars headed to the play-in, the Lakers are headed to the play-in, the Warriors are headed to the play-in, the Suns could be headed to the play-in, you may get a matchup that isn't just a walk in the park as everyone expects, and if Jamal Murray doesn't play again until game one, okay, then what if Durant and Booker and Beal come in here and steal game one because Jamal only gave you 21 minutes in his first game back? Then all of a sudden you don't have home court and you're playing against a Phoenix team that has beaten you three times in a row at home and now has more games in the desert than they do in Denver. Of course I'm laying out sort of a worst-case scenario here, but that to me is why it's important he plays before the playoffs. And unfortunately, I get these vibes from Michael Malone that that is no sure thing. That, and that's kind of where I'm wondering, is this a plan? Was it planned out? Maybe there was a – he tweaked the ankle and it was like, give me some time before we get to, to the postseason run. I mean, they have the experience now. They know what it takes to go through the, the NBA playoffs and to win a championship. So having that involved – but to your, to your point about having – when you lose home court, it's more detrimental in the NBA than any other sport that we watch. No doubt. Because the whistle changes, the calls get changed, uh, and it's just that's the nature of this league, and it always has been. And when you bring up the stars that you did, Durant, Booker, Beal, even if he gets back, uh, the, the Lakers and the Warriors, those three possible potential playoff opponents, you don't want to mess with that kind of fire early in the playoffs. No, you'd almost rather be the three seed and face the Pelicans as the six seed. Like that, yeah. We've I agree. seen Michael Malone manipulate the standings before. He infamously did it, gosh, four or five years ago now, when he wanted Portland in the first round, and he ended up getting his wish because a bunch of games on the last night broke that way, and they ended up, of course, beating the Blazers in that series. And you wonder, will Malone manipulate them again if it looks like the Pelicans are going to be six? Because yes, the Pelicans have some pieces, and I understand we're going to get texts saying, "Ah, oh, what are you talking about? The Pelicans are scary." Okay, but between the Mavericks, the Suns, the Kings, the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Pelicans, the Pelicans are the least scary of those teams. The Kings last year had a great series with Golden State, took them to seven, and everyone else has superstars. And superstars get superstar calls in the playoffs, something Nikola Jokic is trending toward getting, but still not all the way there, a la LeBron or Steph. I do wonder if you said it's part of a plan. Well, and is the plan going to involve manipulating where the Nuggets finish to get a round one matchup that Michael Malone wants. Well, and that's when you're playing with fire. Then you're messing with the sports gods. I've never really kind of believed to try and pick out your opponent because you never know what can happen, especially in professional sports. Sports in general, you could want a certain team and they catch fire at the right time and you're you're sitting on the outside looking in when the NBA Finals roll around in June. So I, I always kind of heed that with a little bit of caution to try and put it out I almost was like just you you end up where you end up but the problem is this Western Conference well I mean just even the teams that you're talking that are in the play-in right now look at the star power that's there it's a ton it's an all-star team and then some yeah and it's not like oh well I'd rather have them than them I, I don't know that you want any one of those three teams 
early in the playoffs. Because like you said, you steal a game quick and then the you get the home court advantage at that point, then you're you're climbing uphill the whole way and you're making your your chance to go and challenge for a repeat that much more difficult for yourself. Yeah, I think the path this year is going to be tougher for the Nuggets than it was last year, if we're just being honest. Obviously, they faced a Minnesota team in round one that was very good, and some people argue was the best and hardest series they faced, but now you've got the Timberwolves with a lot more experience in their belt. You've got Durant and Phoenix for a full year rather than just a trade deadline trade. You've got LeBron knowing maybe this is his last shot. Heck, you got Steph knowing maybe this is his last shot. And I haven't even mentioned Luka, who's almost averaging an absurd triple-double. Yeah. The Clippers and their three-headed monster. And, oh, by the way, the number one seed, the Oklahoma City Thunder. I don't think there's any question in my mind, Cello, that surviving the West this year is going to be a heck of a lot different than it was last year when the Nuggets went 12-3 and three over 15 games. I would say you could go back in history and look at it. I don't know that you're going to have a playoff field in the Western Conference. The conference is stacked as you're going to see the one coming this season. Mm. There's I mean, no it, easy matchups. No. I mean, normally, and you, and you just look at the league as we've grown up with it, there's, you know, the top two or three teams in each conference, and those are those are the people that are vying for, you know, their NBA final berth. This one, from one to ten, there's not like a, a team that you're like, who would you prefer other than the Pelicans? You just rattled off all these teams. I don't know that there's one like, yeah, I'd much rather see them – early than late there's not and and I know they've owned the Lakers of late but I just always fear when you play the Lakers you're going to start playing five on eight and let's be honest they beat the Lakers last year in a bunch of close games because Nikola Jokic was out of his mind yeah and not necessarily because the whistle was even or anything like that so I don't want to play the Lakers because I'm scared of five on eight I don't want to play the Warriors because again they have the championship pedigree and experience that they could clip you at any time if their shooters get hot I mean maybe the Kings but then again we've gone back and forth on Sacramento before we've had a little yeah. fun with that there is still a scary team with a lot of pieces and Sabonis is a guy who's I think almost, almost right there with Jokic for triple doubles so if he can match you and then they've got the you know De'Aaron Foxes of the world and I know they've battled some injuries lately but I guess the Kings would be my choice outside the Pelicans after that again no cakewalks this year nothing is going to be given no, and and I think we're in that season right now, especially being Denver sports fans, of that anxiety, that anxious feeling before the playoffs hit, and we're just you know a few short days or a week or two away from both of these teams that'll be in the postseason and the Avalanche and the Nuggets. And I, I know you wrote about it today that hey man, we should be looking for two parades, mm -hmm. but we're sitting here talking like the fear and the anxiety is kind of setting in. And now it's like, I just want to get to the postseason. It's going to come at us really fast at the end of the month. That's for sure. Because we're going to have the Nuggets in the playoffs, the Avs in the playoffs, the Broncos in their most important draft in years and years and years. <laughs> yeah. So we're kind of at this ramp-up period right now. Well, don't now. forget about the Rockies, Will. Well, yes, the Colorado Rockies. And Lil Wayne's going to be at the spring game. Can't, yeah. You know, can't, can't forget that on April 27th, day three of the NFL draft, Nugs and Avs probably going to have playoff games that Lil Wayne's going to be up there. On the Pac-12 network, by the way, I, I found this – Hilarious. Jell what I, is that? Well, I, th the, I thought the Pac-12 network died. It should we, have, right? With we, the league. Well, that woman, I, I can't remember her name, pardon me, but she had like a really nice send-off and that classy send-off after the Pac-12 basketball tournament where she thanked everyone and thanked their whole crew and they all sticking with it through all this uncertainty. And then the news comes yesterday. Oh, yeah, Dion's team's on the Pac-12 network. I was like, what? Pa pa I didn't even know that still existed. I didn't know the Pac-12 network still existed. My larger point here, it ain't on ESPN this year. And it's also on day three of the draft, and it's also going to be on the day of an Avs or a Nuggets playoff game, maybe both, if one's on the road and one's at home, if the scheduling falls that way. I, I think the CU spring game this year is so low on my list of priorities, whereas last year it was quite high, as it was yeah. for everyone else. You put them above the Rockies, who KJ said they're going to be above 500 at that point. If, if they have a home series that weekend, you go into the spring game – or you're going down to 20th and Blake. I mean, we all, we all talk in this business for a living, KJ, so we all inevitably say some some stuff we regret, right? When you've got an open microphone and your job is to just talk and talk and talk, you're going to say stupid things. But that's, a, that's exactly what happened. I was like, you know, you. I look a week <laughs> later, I can't even rewrite history. <laughs> Wait, so when did you say this exactly, just to be clear? So I said this last week. We were doing our Rockies predictions for the season, and I said not only um, – I was, we were joking around, and I said not only would they go on to win 55 games, I said they'll at least be 500 or better 
by the end of April. Mm. So honestly, that's normally a fairly safe prediction. It it feels like every Thank year, you. Th- this like, is outrageous. They're like thirteen and ten, and then you look up and they're. It's usually May when uh, fourteen and thirty-one, but when the roosters come home. All right, let's get back on track here. This was my fault. I got going on the Sea Spring bad. game and the Rockies. <laughs> well, which one would you go to? The Sea Spring game. Yeah, I'd much rather go see two potential top five picks in Shadur and Travis next year yeah. than go watch anyone on the Rockies. <laughs> that being said, come on down to opening day, everyone. It is going to be fun on Friday. I'm actually looking forward to that. That is that is literally the best Rockies game of the year is the first one. That will be quite a party down there in Lodo. All right, let's, let's talk about this column that I wrote, though, because it sounds like maybe you have a little pushback on this. That I, I wrote this morning at denversports.com that our expectations should be two parades this summer. And two things. First of all, if you walked into either locker room tonight, Cello, and you asked the best Nuggets players, what's the, what's the goal? Championship. You asked the best Avs players, what's the goal? Championship. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything that the guys aren't saying. And I also put the caveat in there, two things. One, I know injuries happen. So I don't need people pushing back to me, well, what if so-and-so gets hurt? Yeah. I understand if so-and-so gets hurt, and I'm not even going to put it in the universe, that those teams aren't going to win the title. And two, I understand Game 7 heartbreaks happen. Could the Nuggets lose Game 7 in the Western Conference Final in overtime? Of course they could. Could the Avs lose an OT on a fluky goal in Game 7 in overtime? Of course they could. I'm just saying let's hope that doesn't happen this year. That's why my goal, I'll say it, my goal this summer is to be at two parades, hopefully about a week apart from each other. Oh, yeah, ultimately that's what we all want. My, I guess my problem is now um, the national narrative is everyone's on the Nuggets train. You know, I heard shows today like, can any of these people beat the Nuggets four times in a seven-game series? And you were talking about schedule manipulation or opponent manipulation. Uh, on the I didn't say li- they should do that. I said no, Michael not Malone them. might do no, that. No, not them. I'm talking other teams are trying to do that as well to try and avoid the Nuggets. Right. Um, so like, those are the things that start to kind of creep into me because you know growing up as a Nuggets fan, last year was like crazy for that to have actually come to fruition – for them to roll through the NBA playoffs the way they did and then end up hoisting the Larry O'Brien trophy, it was just is it was nuts. It was you keep having to pinch yourself because you're like, that did that really happen because of how many heartbreaks we had seen yes. being fans of that team. That was the one if you had asked me three years ago, I'd have been like, I just don't know if it'll ever happen in my lifetime. And now we're talking about them not only winning, but being the best team in the league and having all those things be fortunate bounces or staying healthy or what happens with Jamal, that all that stuff has to fall into place again because as we laid it out, this playoff run is not going to be any easy shake. No. A 16-4 and four run, I doubt, is happening again. No, I, I wouldn't think so for either. I mean, remember, the Az went 16-4 and four too. The two teams posted identical records in back-to-back Junes, but I think if, if they stay healthy, let's, let's do that caveat and let's assume Nachushkin's back. He was spotted skating for an hour this morning over at Family Sports. I think that's huge because we've talked about it. When they have Nachushkin, they're a cup contender. When they don't, for whatever reason, they're a 500 team. He's the straw that, that makes that team go. That being said, if both teams are healthy, which one do you have more faith in can get us at least one parade this summer? The Nuggets. No hesitation. Zero hesitation. Because we don't have a, we don't really have any questions there. If they're all healthy, what's the big question that needs to be answered? Well, if they are healthy, the I, stamina, I, just the general stamina, which is maybe why Jamal's missing this time now. I mean, they played until almost July last year, and they were back at camp in September. Yeah, and that's why it's so hard to go back to back. But it was one year. I mean, I remember when the the Avs were doing that year in and year out, and they finally, I think it was the year they signed Solani and Korea. They just ran out of juice, man. They had played so many games over a five, six year stretch that they just hadn't they didn't have anything left in the tank. The Nuggets, this will be their second year trying to make that run. And if they are healthy, a hundred percent, I don't think there's a question about like, oh well, maybe this if this doesn't happen, even the bench, I think, for the most part, is kind of starting to kind of figure itself out where you're not gonna lose big leads if you put them in or or have the game get out of out of hand. Like we did we even saw that kind of at times last year. With the Avalanche, on the other hand, the goalie situation is that's the most important position in that sport. Yeah, but they also won a cup two years ago with two goalies. They had Kemper and Francois, and they complimented each other nicely. And we remember Kemper getting poked in the eye and Francois coming in and playing well. And then he played the whole Western Conference final and they swept Edmonton and busted out the brooms. It's not conventional. I, I give you that. It is not conventional. 
But if I told you today, hey, the Avs have to play 24 playoff games and Georgiev plays 16 and Ananin plays eight for a variety of different reasons, whether that be performance or injuries or whatever, I think the general fan goes, well, that's not sustainable. And then I would just say, well, they did it two years ago. Yeah, yeah. But my, my, qu- that's, my question is, that's not the, is that answered yet? No. Could it happen? Yeah. The likelihood of going into it like that and having that happen. How many times has it happened in a, a postseason run in the Stanley Cup p- playoffs? Very rarely. I mean, goal, you goalies to, win Conn Smythe trophies. Yeah, you, I mean, you have to think, dude. There's, there's a year when I think John Sebastian Jaguer. Ooh, good, good name. He was in, I think they were the eighth seed. And he just stood on his head the entire playoffs. Like, that kind of stuff can happen. So it's not only how your goaltender's playing, but there's guys that can get hot in, in net, and they can carry a team to a Stanley Cup. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah, I mean, the, the Avs famously played the Panthers in 96 because Jean Van Viesbroek got hot for Florida yeah. and took him to the final, and then, then Peter Forsberg happened in the final, and Joe Sackick happened, and the Avalanche swept him down there in South Beach in Game 4. Who scored the winning goal? U.E. Krupp. That a boy, Will. Love that U.E. Krupp highlight. Man, you were like seven, maybe. Triple yeah. overtime. Yeah, well, I've watched the highlight about 137 <laughs> times. I will ask you this, though, because I got this from a few people today. Is it greedy? Greedy, I think is the appropriate word, to want two parades this summer? No. Thank you. No, Thank not you. at all. You just said it. If you went into that locker room and you asked that team what their expectation or goal is and what the only thing they'll be satisfied with – is that this isn't a team that's or either one of these teams. They're not sneaking into the postseason hoping that they can make a little run to, you know, get build some momentum for the next season. These are two teams that were built to win right now. And that's the ultimate goal is to have those two parades. And hopefully like, you know, a couple weeks stretch, you got two parades in downtown Denver, but there's a sports are funky. The puck bounces weird. Sometimes mm-hmm. injuries happen. I'm just at that point where I want game one to get here for both squads. Yeah, I am too. It's kind of like the NFL draft, ironically, yeah. that can we space these out a little bit? Nope, nope. The sports calendar isn't going to let us space them out. We're going to be in the thick of it with the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, and the N- NHL draft, or NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, <laughs> NFL draft. Wow. Go with Goodness. Stanley Cup. That's how you kind of split it up a little bit. You guys know what I'm saying. Yeah. Come the end of April, we're going to be drinking out of a fire hose and this thing is going to be so much fun and i'm not one who thinks you should wish your life away but if someone walked into this room today and said hey you want to take a time machine to three weeks from today <laughs> i might not say no cello yeah because it's it's a slog you're right and it's why we opened the show talking about murray missing his sixth straight game and it brings me back to a year ago today when they were struggling down the stretch and flailing down the stretch and people oh is malone got them prepared and are they even going to get out of round one and then they go on an all-time great 20-game run and win their first-ever Larry O'Brien trophy. Also remember, who stumbled into the 22 playoffs? The Avalanche. Those last five, six games down yeah. the stretch weren't pretty, and I vividly remember I was on uh, – I had just been working here for only a few months at the time. This was two years ago. And I was on with when uh, Stokely and Zach were paired together as a show. And I remember Stokely telling me how worried he was about the Avs. And I was like <laughs> – Stoke, they're going to sweep the Predators, and they're going to have no issue whatsoever. And he, oh, they ain't sweeping the Predators. And not only did they sweep the Predators, remember they won the first game, what, like 8-1 to one yes. or so, something? It wasn't it was even just, a game. So I think that's a good reminder for you, I, everyone driving around listening right now. The Nuggets struggled at the end of the regular season and then won the title. The Avs struggled at the end of the regular season and then won the title. What were the Avs last year at the end of the regular season? They were great. They were foot on the gas, yeah. went in the division, and then they played Seattle, and they were done. So maybe – Great point. While I offer you that three-week time machine, maybe we remember during these three weeks as the Avs lose to Columbus last night 4-1 and people on social media are panicking because the mm-hmm. Blue Jackets stink. Maybe I remind you that the most two recent champions both stunk down the stretch. And if the Nuggets falter in these last seven, eight games and the Avs falter in their last six, seven games – don't worry about it. No one's going to remember these games a month from now. They're going to remember the postseason. Right. But you also have to take into account each year's different. And seating's on the line for both teams right now. Right. And I, I guess I guess the anxiousness just comes from what we've seen over the past two weeks. Because if you would have asked me two weeks ago, what were, what were we saying two weeks ago? Both of these teams are on a tear, right? Mm-hmm. Zero concern whatsoever. The Avs came out. with They, they had a nine-game win streak. 
and the Nuggets, how they've come out of the the All Star break, the way they've played since then, the way uh, Joker himself has played just since the All Star break is is crazy. So it's it's just one of those things. It's a, it's a part of being a fan and covering teams in professional sports because you never know. It's like you said. I mean, how many times does a team go into the Stanley Cup playoffs and they they got the President's Trophy? And then what happens? What happened to Boston last year? Losing round how, one. How dominant yep. were they all season long? Well, a lot of people think that thing's cursed. Yeah. Because uh, that trophy hasn't produced a Stanley Cup winner in more than a decade. And it's it's all round one, round two losses when you win that thing. Yeah, heck, the Az won it, what, three years ago and lost to Vegas in round mm-hmm. two. I think, too, with the Nuggets, the way you look at it right now is, okay, last year they didn't have seating on the line. Because they were going to be the number one seed no matter what. Remember, they beat Memphis. They went up seven and a half games. John Morant went to shotguns, and the rest is history (laughs) in terms of the number one seed. But this year, is there that pressure? Or is it like, you know what? The Thunder are young. If we have to start the series in their barn, we don't really care. And the Timberwolves, yeah, they're much better than they were last year. But we also won a game in their barn last year. If we have to start up there, we'll be okay. It's not like you're starting in LeBron and his prime in his arena. There is a case to be made that the three seed, that you'd have home court against everyone except for Minnesota and Oklahoma City, isn't that big a deal at the end of the day. Well, maybe that's the plan then, Will. And maybe that's why we're seeing some of the decisions that have been made of late. That game last Friday against Minnesota, kind of that would say that would make me tend to believe that there's a, there's a bigger plan. Because they got housed. And we we talked about we've talked about it on this show numerous times how big these games against Minnesota were going to be coming down the stretch. And I know Carl Anthony Towns is out, but still they haven't been, they haven't really they haven't slumped off. I mean they're still playing pretty dang good basketball. And ten days prior, they the Nuggets had a you know a win in their barn, and you thought, all right, that's it, that's going to be it. And you came out Friday and get housed the way you did. It's like, is there something else going on here? I think that Cleveland game on Sunday was really important. I mean, I get it. They shot like 64% from three or whatever, something absurd. But it did kind of – I think I tweeted it on Sunday afternoon like, hey, the Nuggets just reminded everyone they're still the best team in basketball. Because the way they came out against a Cavaliers team that's a very solid Cavaliers team, that I think let everyone take a deep breath that even without Jamal, they were still okay. Now, are you going to shoot? Is is KCP going to make six threes in a playoff game? I don't know. Is Reggie Jackson going to make four threes in a playoff game? I don't know. But I think it was a good reminder because look what Nikola Jokic did. He had like 26, 18, yeah. 16, something absurd. Stupid. I think tonight, though, is another game that I view kind of like that Cleveland game. Just go out and take care of business. That's the difference. The Nuggets are beating the teams that aren't good. The Avalanche, are, on the other hand, are losing to teams that are inferior opponents. Let's be honest. So I'll throw the question back at you then. Who are you more confident in? providing the city of Denver with another parade 2024. The Nuggets. I would I would agree with you. On yeah. That. Yeah. All right guys, in the meantime Denver Sports, we are on YouTube. If you would look us up, maybe like a video, leave a comment, share or most importantly hit the subscribe button. We would appreciate it Denver Sports on YouTube.